Hello and welcome. In this lesson, we try to understand how absorption of water and mineral salts takes place in plants. Now, the site for absorption of water and mineral salts is the root. As you've seen earlier, the root is structurally adapted to facilitate the process of absorption. In this diagram here, we see the various type of tissues that are present in the root. Now we're going to relate the structure and this process of absorption that takes place in the root. Now water is drawn into the root hair cells. Recall within the epidermis, this is the epidermis made up of epidermal cells. There are certain parts where the epidermal cells develop an extended projection known as the root hair. Water is drawn from the soil solution. Within the soil, there is some water, there's always some water. And this water contains dissolved minerals. And that's why it is referred to as soil solution. Now, the osmotic pressure of the soil solution is lower than that of the cell sap in the root hair. In other words, the osmotic pressure in the cytoplasm and the subvacuole of the root hair cell is higher. As a result, water is drawn into the root hair by osmosis. So water coming from the soil solution is drawn into the root hair by osmosis, travels into towards the center of the cell. Now, as a result of the absorption of water into the epidermal cells, the osmotic pressure of this epidermal cell becomes lower relative to the osmotic pressure of the adjacent cortical cells. So let's number this. This is your cortical cell number one. This is number two, number three. Of course, there are many, many more layers of cortical cells, but for simplicity, in this diagram, we only have three. So when water is drawn into the epidermal cells by osmosis, the osmotic pressure is lowered relative to the adjacent cortical cells. As a consequence, water will be drawn from the epidermal cells into the outermost cortical cells by osmosis. Remember, the direction of osmosis is always from a region of low osmotic pressure to a region of high osmotic pressure across the cell wall, the cell membrane, and into the cytoplasm and eventually into the subfacule within the sub within the cell. So water gets into the outermost cortical cells. This water then lowers osmotic pressure of the cortical cell relative to the osmotic pressure of the cells next to it. So as a consequent, water will then flow by osmosis from the outer cortical cells into the inner cortical cells whose osmotic pressure is thus lowered relative to the inner cortical cells. Thus, there's an osmotic pressure gradient that is created. And so in this manner, water will move from the one cortical cells to the next until the water finally reaches the endodermis. Now, the endodermis facilitates the movement of water and the mineral salts into the xylem. The Casparian strip, that woody band of material, facilitates the movement of water into the xylem. One way in which the endodermis facilitates movement of water into the xylem 
is through pumping of salts. Salts are actively pumped into the xylem, thereby raising the osmotic pressure in the xylem. With a high osmotic pressure, water from the endodermis will then flow and move into the xylem by osmosis. So, in the absorption of water, water moves along an osmotic pressure gradient. There's a relatively high amount of water in the soil solution. So water will flow from where it is highly concentrated in the soil solution across the various layers of cells and all the way to the endodermis and then from the endodermis into the xylem found within the root. So absorption of water is by osmosis and the movement of water across the cells in the root is also by osmosis until eventually the water gets into the xylem. Now the uptake of mineral salts occurs through both diffusion and active transport. Within the soil solution, there are a number of mineral salts that the plant requires for growth. Now, this includes nitrates. You have nitrates, magnesium, among other ions. So depending on the relative concentration, if the soil solution has a higher concentration of nitrates than the plant tissues, then the absorption will be by diffusion. But in many cases, the concentration of these mineral salts in the soil is lower than that in the plant root tissues. So these mineral salts are taken up by active transport. Magnesium ions are absorbed by active transport and moved by active transport from one cell to the other until eventually they get into the xylem. The active transport that results in the active uptake of mineral salts uses energy. So any factor that affects the availability of energy, which is obtained through respiration, does also affect the absorption of many mineral salts in the soil. So water is taken by osmosis to the xylem and mineral salts are absorbed by both diffusion and active transport along the various tissues to the xylem. Once in the root xylem, the water and mineral salts will then move up the stems to the leaves.